show you guys the two different sizes of power rams that I use for uh, catching wolves and coyotes. I used to always use the ram number one, which is mainly for coyote. It's a little bit lower than the Wolfmaster. And over the years, I've switched over to Wolfmaster just because it's given me more flexibility on how I can set my sets in the snow and uh, and just optimum height for catching the wolves and coyotes. So you can see there's a nice size difference. I'm gonna do a little bit of a demo with this ram number one and on how it, uh, with the anchor down low, how it acts as a spring and doesn't allow your non-targets to get released. And then I'll follow up with a couple other different sets with the Wolfmaster. So we'll look at this here in a here second. Here is how I have uh, my end, just like all the other times. I just have a loop that closes up and bites back on the cable. So I'm gonna go around the base of this tree here, just to show you how I anchor it. So I always go down low, pull it around, and then feed my ram through it. And pull this tight. And there I'm anchored. So now I'll put a snare in here and just show you how I set it off. So these snares here, power rams have two safeties. There's one that holds it in this shape. And you can buy another uh, safety that just goes on top there to help you adjust once you take that off. So I'm gonna feed this snare through here. This snare is uh, made for the, the ram, number one, and it's uh, a one by 16th cable, this one here. So you just feed it through this eye here, and there's a little notch down here where there's a stop that'll feed onto that. We'll take a closer look at it in a second. And you just feed it through, Go your lap link around twice. And then we're gonna just put it on this notch here. So it goes through, here's that notch. There's a little washer there and then a squished nut. The support wire goes on top of it right here. And then just this little washer and nut hold the pressure from the spring here from opening up. I'll set it in position and I'll show you the rest here. So here, like I showed you, that nut's gonna hold this pressure. And how I set these is I just compress it a little bit so this gets loose. I slide that off and I'm pushing with this finger to hold that trigger in the notch. And then I slowly release my finger and this is set. I'm gonna keep this safety on and I'll position my ram how I like to set my rams up in the snow, you can see this uh, lap link is on the opposite side. I have to adjust it depending. Sometimes if it's on this side, the loop's gonna hang crooked. So you gotta twist it over to get your snare the right uh, angle. And depending on the side that it's open is the side that I'll use the rest in the tree in the crotch of the tree here. So what I do here is I got my safety on, keeping pressure there, and I'll actually lift up my snare to get out in the middle of the trail. If I have to, I can lean it over. If uh, I need to get it out in the trail more, you can just take a piece of wire and go around the tree and just give it a half twist there just enough to keep it from sliding down. Just position it properly here. There we go. And now that enables me to reach further out into the trail. I don't have to blend in too much here. If I did, I just grab a, a branch or something that's local to the area and just put it in just to break up the pattern a little bit and still leave their trail open. I'm snaring on their trails that they already have established or if it's one I make, I'll walk in and pack it down. You've seen that in the videos. 
where I pack it down, I call it walking it out. And then I leave that center like that. Coyote's coming along through the snare here. It gets caught. And right now there's just the resistance of that half twist wire there. Lots of times when I'm snaring in the winter, I just have it resting against the tree and then right now it'll fall over. So I give it a little bit of a pull. So now it's starting to come. And then I have it anchored there. My anchors are usually six to eight feet, which gets it out of my perfect little pinch spot. This is following the coyote now. And the coyote's nervous. Lots of times they'll turn towards it to face it. And that's where that hair gets pulled up close to the back of the head. And then when it goes to the fire, it gives it a tuck and it pulls it in and keeps that pressure on it. And that's why lots of times you just see they go over here and expire off the trail. It's, I'll bring it up to you here and you can just see, this is a little bit of a punky log, but it's dug right in until it's smooth. So if I want to come around later, I pick up my coyote, I'm gonna release it, it's dead. I come, I just step on it, I push this down a little bit and reverse the lap link so the snare comes out and then release the pressure. Take my snare and then I'm gone. So this is what it looks like when they're open, right? And uh, the compression there. So I'm gonna hook it back up because I wanted to show you guys why not to hook down here. So that's tight on the coyote's neck again, right? But if I pretend I'm a bigger animal, I'm a deer or a moose or something like that, and I have these big enough so they break, they're 364, they act like a deer breakaway. If I was in there, I could do this, and it's not a direct pull. So it acts like a shock absorber, and I think wolves even make it do that a little bit. So they pull, and then that could fray, pop that off. When we release the Wolfmaster, I'll show you how I have them set up. So it's a direct pull and there's no guesswork. It either breaks or the animal's dead waiting there for you. So this is how, two ways you can set your rams. Um, you can do it the way the manufacturer says. So on the ground, usually it's, there's lots of snow here. So it's a bit of an issue. You can put it on top of your, your canines body somewhere but you want to bring down your safety hook bring it up I have my leg here and away from me so if it does release it shoots off that way it doesn't get me in the face rides up my shin so I can bring it down and I'm bringing it down and rehooking it right here so now it's ready to be set again once we fire off the power ram, the Wolfmaster, I'll show you another way. Okay, so what I do now is I have these uh, split rings. Uh, people use them for foot holding, so they're nice and strong. I only had one kind of open up, stretch up. And there was a moose that went through, but it held. And uh, what I like about it is after I anchor it, air pulls tight, that rises up, so it's a direct pull. So it breaks uh, the snare. So I'm gonna set this one up just like I did before. All right, just open up my loop here. Go around the base. Slide it up and through. Tighten my loop so it slides and binds. And that's perfect. This uh, anchor is a little bit longer. This is one of my eight footers. So I get it further away from my pinch spot right here. And I kind of rest it there. So this is one of my things that I do. That's why I like the Wolfmaster. In the beginning of the year, I can lower it down. So I'm the same height as a, a Ram number one. And then as the snow gets deeper, I raise it up. Or if I'm just targeting wolves, I can raise it up to the proper height for them. Lots of times, 
what another thing I can do, I'll show you again a little bit later, but just explain it now, is actually I can hide my ram more on this side and have the snare come out. So there's no sign of this ram. I hide it behind the tree and some grass usually that's there, some shrubs. So I'll load this one up with another ram and we'll fire it off again. So I got my safety on again and I'm gonna load in, this cable is the 364 cable. A little finer than the 116. And I'll show you why I prefer this one here. So I'm gonna load up my, put my uh, snare and my trigger. And I know right now that if I have it in there, it's gonna wanna twist a little bit. So I'm gonna refeed it to the other side, to the other direction here. And it wants to sit better. I can just feel it the way it is. So I loosen it off, put my finger here, flip this one uh, trigger safety out, and then I release my finger. Never put your fingers in this hole or in this loop. If you put your fingers in the loop here, there's a chance that you'll lose something there because it's going to open up real fast and uh, not give you a lot of time to react. So I, pretending I have my snare in the proper spot here, this way this tree is, I'd have to lean it out. And I'm just gonna grab something there and we're gonna fire it off. I got a pork leg here and uh, it's, it's nice and meaty, nice and soft. We're gonna see how that digs in. To me, it kind of resembles a coyote's neck. It feels about as fleshy. So we're gonna see what happens. I'll take my safety off, put it up there. Put my snare on here and that power ram is going to travel up the snare so it's not going to hit me and then we'll kind of just tighten it up like we did before oh, yeah. <laughs> okay so again we're going to fire it off right now we're eight feet away from my pinch spot perfect right then I can reuse that over and over all season. And whatever happens here, it's usually not a lot of disturbance. And I'm gonna fire this off. And there's a bit of resistance when it fires, I'm holding back. Um, if it's a lighter coyote, it's gonna snap it back and get pulled over there. But here I'm gonna control it a bit. I'm gonna fire it. And now it's pulled me forward. And then now it's full, full pin right on this uh, leg here. So it's pulling in, digging in there. And then if you watch my anchor on the other end here, if I pull it, you see how it slid? Now it's a straight pull. And then, and then now if it's, it's trying to pull, there's no give. There's no uh, give on the spring acting like a shock absorber. It's just a direct pull. So this was a moose or a deer it'd be able to pop that spring. But since this is a coyote or a wolf, it's just pulling and keeping it tighter. And then you can see how much more it's going in there. It's squeezing the juice right out of it. So another way I reset these snares, it's not recommended by the manufacturer, but it is, uh, pretty helpful if the snow is deep and you just kind of compress it a bit with your arms get in the crotch of your legs and get your legs to squeeze it together and you control it with your hands and then you hook it in and then you're good to go again so that's all I, I do for these power rams kind of ride you through the basic setup of it watch the videos and through the season I'll add more how-to videos of clips that I've done